another great matchup as you see the Oshawa 88s picking up the what some may call an upset victory over Simcoe, the hometown team. They looked really, really strong, but they have another difficult test against the Guelph Brewers. And if you know, and if you've been following the Guelph Brewers in the 3HL, you know they pick it up as they pick up more steam and more steam. I found that their best game of the tournament always comes in game number two. So we'll have to see if that trend continues. There's the man with the game-winning goal uh, at center actually stretching while we take a look at the uh, the chin wagging going on. But uh, new daddy, big daddy Theo Beckham was right at center ice there. And he he got the difference maker there. Marcus Carroll and Chris Chappell there, both of them uh, growing up in Ajax and Pickering. So both of them, I don't believe they ever played together with the Ajax Pickering Raiders. Uh, Marcus Carroll in 89 birth and Chris Chappell in 88, but both of them playing for the Ajax Pickering Raiders. So like I said before, and you've mentioned the hockey community is so tight, but I mean Ajax Pickering, basically the same Sorry town. So other. they have skated in the summer all together. They have buddies who played together. So that's the thing. Once the whistle blows, they're not friends. No. But it's time for them, while this tournament's going on, to catch up with buddies. That's, a, that's a, what Rick Jackman mentioned to us. He can't wait to talk with everybody. I think that should have been over and back. Oh, yeah. Good point there, right? Off the, yeah, and that's being called. Now, you see that those two guys are beside each other, but one doing a little more <laughs> growing than the other. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, Marcus Carroll's done some growing uh, yeah. the other way. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> He's a buddy of mine, I can say okay, it. Okay, as, as a man who's been doing plenty of growing himself, <laughs> I know, I feel that myself. There's a pass back. Oshawa looking to strike first. You help that miner makes the stop. Alex Dupuy. Theo Beckham in back of the net. He's bothered. How much is he bothered? Well, not so much because he's getting away from his man. He takes a look back at his attacker or maybe to see who to pass the puck to. It was Snetzinger who was giving him a hard time. And Vinny Morente makes v a great stop. And this is big for Vinny Morente. He played with the Brewers for two tournaments oh, yes. last year. That's right. So he is certainly going to want to try to gain redemption and prove to the Brewers, say, hey, you guys picked the wrong goaltender. You certainly did. Yeah, you should have kept me. I often notice that many, many times in the Ontario Junior Hockey League. The guy who goes out of the team when he comes back with his new club, man, do they ever give him a hard time. Yes. He's the best player out there. You know yes. what I mean? That's, that's often what it is. It's like, oh, I knew you. I'm going to show you guys why you shouldn't have traded me. I'm going to take it out on you. And that's an interesting uh, way to look at things. But uh, as you say, Vinny Morenti going to Oshawa, finds himself in a semifinal. There's a pass, went right through the crease. Nobody home on the back end there. Virgo's got it, plays it over to the near side. Coming down the wall, taking his time. This is Chris Chappell. Chappell finds a man far side, wide of the mark, off the end boards to Chappell. Who's working there against Sean Jones? Jones had a goal to make it five nothing. Two goals actually last Pardon game. Me. Pardon me, my my bad there. So Jones with a couple. I'm sure he'd be quick to point that out if he was a little <laughs> with an earshot. <laughs> it's rimmed uh, around the boards gently there by the net miner near side half wall, played back below the goal line. Krelov gave it over. Now he heads off. Looking down ice, there's a couple of players. McLean, one of them. Underwood, the other. That's one. Ooh. That one got away from Vinny Morente. Not delay a game, though, in this league, is no, it? No, it is not. That's something to keep in mind, then, right? If you're allowed to put one over the glass as a defender or a goaltender, that's just a little something for the memory banks for later. Because when I used to play as a kid in the 70s and very early 80s and everything like that. Defensemen could loft the puck over if they were in too much trouble mm -hmm. and not uh, get in any I mean, with three on three hockey, you have so much room to kind of get yourself out of trouble. That's true. Oh, no trouble scoring for Greg Virgo, though. So with four minutes to go, Guelph strikes first. And it comes from a great pass here. And Virgo just puts that where Vinny Morenzi can get it. Blocker side low. The toughest place for a goaltender to make a save. Yes, indeed. He punched at it, but didn't come up with it. So here they come. Oshawa. Trying to step around his man. Leo Peckham. Quickly. Coming the other way. Taking a look. Looking off. Making the pass across. Into the skates, though. The recipient. Unable to do anything there. Was, whoa, a big hit along the wall. Jeff McDermott. McDermott now puts his shoulders down and heads off the ice. 
coming down left wing side getting a couple of chops at him there this is when you know money's on the line Oshawa's number 16 that's Schalig Stefan Schalig over to here to Shane Terry into the slot stopped Guelph coming the other way now down to 256 one nothing Guelph leads Virgil Oh, same shot again, only from further out. Bit of a screen on this one. 2 0. Guelph is in charge. Matt Kennedy's just going to carry on the puck in and just puts that one in just on the inside bar. Like you said, almost the identical spot. So these are, like I said, these are guys that have know Vinnie Morente well. He was their goalie last year. So. That definitely gives an advantage to these shooters because they know his weaknesses and they know his strengths. And his tendencies, too. Some yes. people cheat off the post. They give you one side and then take it away. And oftentimes, goaltenders are very clever because they have to be. That's part of their trade. It gets over and back. So here goes. Two minutes and six seconds going, uh, uh, remaining rather here in the first. Time is going. Two to nothing. Guelph leads. Looking to pick up. Ooh, that one's right a couple inches off the ice. And a great marker there for Brett McLean. who makes it look easy against a great goaltender. Yeah, Brett McLean just sneaks that one through Vinny Morente. So obviously, the scouting report is out. Beautiful pass again from Chris Chappell. He's been dishing out apples like nobody's business. Morente with a big bounce back save. Robs Virgo from his second goal of the game. So... Virgo was denied, but there's apples from chapels. That's what I'm finding out. <laughs> Here we go. Oshawa inside the zone. They're looking to get something on the score sheet. You got to feel like you have to sort of break the spell, if you will. Hurrying on to that was Roberto. Passes gobbled up and coming the other way. Joe Underwood had it. And Underwood decides he's going to lug it all the way down ice. Dropped it off. They look over to the far side. Find Matt Kennedy. Kennedy shows he wants it back. He's got it again. A couple of players nearly colliding at the blue line there. Kennedy with it. Lowers the shoulder, fires Ooh. the shot. They're, they're trying to exploit the blocker side, aren't they? Yeah, they're shooting blocker side low. Almost every single shot so far has been there, with the exception of the one shot from Brett McLean that went through the wickets. But, I mean, clearly the scouting report is out on Morenti. Shoot low and shoot blocker side, which, like I said before, it's pretty much every single goalie's weakness. Well, it's, it's hard to get to those corners, you know. And that's one thing Rich Wigmore was working on, the London goaltender earlier there. I could see he was putting a little extra effort there, making sure he was warmed up efficiently and getting those feet to the corner to deny the opportunities. Green Onions playing by the uh, like Booker T and the MGs. I think this is the band as time winds down. So three to nothing is the score right now. The Brewers are, are sitting pretty. I don't want to toot my own horn, but. Two to away. Horn here comes horn the horn. <laughs> Let's be honest here. What did I say? The Guelph Brewers, they always look their strongest in that second game. Takes them a little while to get going in the first. The second game, they are so, so strong. We'll see if they can do enough in the second to come out with a win, and we'll see what happens in the finals. But I've seen this story far, far too many times last year where the Guelph Brewers pick up so much steam in that second game, and they really find their stride. Matt Kennedy finally getting on the board. We've seen Virgo really play strong and Chris Chappell as well. No goals for him this evening, but man, he has a ton of assists and has looked great, playing great in his own end as well. Yeah, and he's about to face off there against Sean Jones. A couple of former OHLers taking that face off. Chris Chappell yeah. also a former captain of the Saginaw Spirit, so oh, wow. a great leader off and on the ice as well. Was that when they had uh, the Stephen Colbert mascot? Remember they had a funny name for the Saginaw Spirit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what the name was. I'm trying to remember because we're big fans of Colbert now, my wife and I. We watch it uh, pretty much every evening just for all the uh, great humor involved. And there's a quick up there. Vinnie Morenti playing this one forward. Here's a three-on-one shaping up. Fake shot. Pass. Oh, there it is, baby. Oshawa strikes. Three to one now with 6.24 to go. Up and over the shoulder. Sean Jones once again 
making his impact felt. Little fake clapper, Bar Mexico. <laughs> Shawnee Jones with his third goal of the night, and it's an absolute beaut. <laughs> I haven't been around too many bars in Mexico. We'll talk later. But I, I know what you're saying. That was an absolute beautiful one, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a great. Now, that fake clapper, uh, I don't think he fooled anybody. Yeah, that's your new line now, Bar Mexico. That's, that's your best one, bar none, my friend. Is, <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, sir. It's uh, easy to do. Us. Oh, that one is harder to do for Oshawa there as they came close. They chip it down the wall, keep this one alive. Two on one right now. There's a better fake a clapper, but a stick in the way intercepts the pass. That one's so close to being in the back of the cage. But now we're down to 530, 530 exactly. Three to one is Lots the score. Lots of time. Lots yeah. of time. Now you've got to tell them that, though, yeah. because it seems like every time you do anything, another two minutes is off the clock. Guelph waiting. It's Jeff McDermott now. McDermott says, hey, you're not going to take the pass. I'll do it myself. And he went after the puck. 3HL fans, if you're recognizing Jeff McDermott, where do I recognize that name? He has played in the 3HL before, just one game, and it was when the Saugeen Winterhawks uh, played the Kitchener Lions up in Port Elgin. He was probably their best player. Do you know what's funny? Because I remember the name Jeff McDermott because I was there. I only did a yes. few games with you guys last year, but I do remember Jeff McDermott. Yes, he was by far their best player on that Winterhawks team. And, I mean, he must have seen, hey, this is fun. I want to get out in the action. So yeah. now he's playing here with the Brewers. Yes, indeed. And there's a pass, and somebody was too busy heading off the ice there. Andrew Boyle was saying, I think I'm coming off now. And they just made a pass towards him. Laid off some skates as well as the puck's bouncing. A couple of broken plays trying to settle things down here is Sean Jones. Jones of New York steps around a man, runs into another one. It's not a, nobody said it was going to be easy, but it's uh, very entertaining, my friend. Good job there to take away the puck from Jones. That's Joe Underwood. Four the, minutes left, so still some time here for Oshawa to chip away, but Guelph, they're known to keep the all-out attack. Doesn't matter what the score is. Yeah, there's a backdoor oh. pass, an absolute beauty of a save by Morenti. Morenti, after letting a couple of weak ones, it seems like he's starting to find his stride here. Yeah, it seems like he's serious. Two come over the boards here for uh, Oshawa. And one of the players saying, uh, Snetzinger going, hey, 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 that was my change, I think. That's the problem, though. That one goes off the metal. And nowhere but metal. So they're coming the other way. Here's Snetzinger now. He got a change in that he was looking for. Can I get a second effort against Theo Peckham? No, he can't. Peckham's pass finds a man down ice. Streaking Brett McLean. McLean. They get right into it. It's great to see they don't get too carried away. It was Noel Coltis played in the IHL. Also played in Netherlands as well. That one goes way up. We got a souvenir for one of the uh, young people here because they tend to be running to them faster yes. than anybody else, don't they? Lofted all the way down ice past everybody. They're looking for Greg Virgo, who opened up the score, and Virgo's got it in the corner. Tried to sidestep his man, Coltis. Didn't do so. It's over to the far side, though. Jeff McDermott. McDermott scores! No, 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 Nets the off. net's off! Oh, McDermott. That's off. They, they still think they scored. Yeah. I can't wait till Theo Peckham sees that's not a goal. <laughs> well, they're sounding the horn. I don't think no they goal. No goal. No goal. No goal. So... No time for explanations. Yeah, it doesn't enough. go in until he kicks it off. I'm trying to argue that the goaltender purposely knocked it off its moorings. Every goaltender that did it was held responsible for it. We wouldn't get much hockey played, my friend, because I've seen it so many times. Depends on the arena, too. The North York Arena, the Herb Carney, a lot of people play there, and that's one where it comes off all the time. So uh, Jim Lowe was announcing to the crowd in attendance what happened there because the official said no goal, the net was off. But look at this, Guelph. And then penalty. Penalty was coming, and it was Morenti who was saying, like, come on. So a Winwell penalty shot. This is huge with a minute 42 to go here. If I'm here, Oshawa if I'm here. I'm Oshawa. I'm saying get, to the, get me to the goal, to the church on time. Yeah. I'd say definitely take Sean Jones. He's got the hot hand right now, three goals. But he's got it. I'd be hurrying up to the line. Oh, he pushed it a little bit too far. Oh, he might not have. Oh! <laughs> Just when you think you know what's for dinner, they change the menu. 
Man, what a race there. The goaltender thought about it. Dupuis bit. I Here it he is. It Sean far. Jones pretends it's too far. <laughs> Goalie bites out and puts oh. that through the wicket. Sean Jones. Another goal. What a dominant performance for the newcomer for the 88s. Well, he's in Collingwood, but I'm calling him Jones of New York because he's, <laughs> uh, he's making some really sweet plays out there. Scored a huge one there. It's 3 2, 54 seconds to go, folks. Don't go anywhere. Morenti, they need a goal. Oshawa, so he's going somewhere to the bench, that is. Extra attack. Oh, that took a bad bounce. It did. It hit the uprights. Uh, the uh, just sort of danced around inside the zone. And here is the game. That's a two thousand dollar two foot plus, my friend, wasn't it? Uh, what an unfortunate bounce for the 88s. Momentum was shifting their way. Puck comes wrapping around and just goes right to Chapel, who headmans the puck to to Peck, or sorry to Brett, Brett McLean, McLean, who won't find an easier goal. And Chapel's going to try to hit that open cage, and that's his first goal of the evening. And very unfortunate for Oshawa, just. Deserving a much better fate in this one. I uh, worked. I used to have a, a color guy who was an ex-coach, and he'd been around the leagues for years. And he used to say, "That's going to do it. Lock it, block it, and stick it in your pocket." That was, you know, <laughs> once the game was done, and that's pretty much it. There's 27 seconds now. They started the clock, but uh, the net's still empty. But that's too much of a lead, I think. It's uh, five to two. Actually, it says four two on this on the clock, but that's not correct because, uh, well, there it is. Now it's five to two. So down to 15 seconds. Just make that 6-2, shall we? A long distance goal. So Oshawa coming the distance here, but going away, making it to the semis. Guelph awaits the winner. Well, I'm sorry, Guelph. Oh, Newmarket's awaiting the winner of yep. this game, of course. So it's going to be Guelph and Newmarket. It looks like they're just going to let this one run out and. Yeah. So we do know the finals. Newmarket taking on the Guelph Brewers here at the 3HL Collingwood Classic for the second time. We saw it last year. Newmarket winning in overtime over the Brewers. Well, we have ourselves a rematch this time for the 3HL Remembrance Day Collingwood Classic. It's the Brewers taking on the Saints. Well, I've... Uh I've had a few brews in my time, and I've known a few Saints, but uh, <laughs> this is going to be very, very interesting indeed. Who has the edge, in your opinion, Pat Gregoire? Oh. You're going to really do this to sorry, me, eh? Sorry, Well, I, I'm thinking Newmarket's so strong, I, but I can't take anything away from Guelph. They're phenomenal. You know what? I, I Honestly, I think I do have to say Newmarket's got the edge. Yeah. They won the tournament last year. Yeah. Uh, momentum's on their side. They've looked so strong. I think they do... Maybe maybe don't have as strong as a team on, on paper, but hey, let's be honest. The game's not played on paper. It's no. played on the ice. And the way that we've seen Newmarket play so far, they have been the more consistent team uh, uh, between the two teams. And speaking of consistency, probably the most consistent player so far for the Brewers has been Chris Chappell. And Sam McDade is rinkside with that man right there. Thanks, Pat. That's right. Longside Chris Chapel and Chris, you, McLean, Underwood, you guys have great chemistry out there. Do you think it's because of your similar style of play, or what do you think it chalks up to? Well, I think it helps when there's no goalie in the net at the end. That, uh, that obviously helps a lot, but we, uh, we're familiar with each other. We played together at Waterloo, and he was our coach, so uh, yeah, we know each other well. The Guelph Brewers are headed to the finals now against Newmarket. Now, Guelph has made the finals a couple times in our previous season, and it took towards the end to get that big check. What do you think you got to do in this finals to get a big check right off the hop in this season? Uh, Newmarket's a great team. They got a lot of skill. Uh, we just got to play them pretty tight defensively and then capitalize on our chances. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks a lot. Best of luck.